Hello, I'm going to spend a few minutes and tell you how to calibrate your power cow heart rate strap. Basically, power cow is a glorified heart rate strap. It's got a little bit of hardware and software in it that allows you to estimate power based on heart rate response. Uh, supposedly, for many, it is accurate enough out of the box. I found for myself that wasn't the case and went through the steps to calibrate it, and I'll show you how to do so. First thing you're going to need, obviously, is the Power Agent software itself. It's a free download from PowerTap. You're going to need a USB stick to be able to talk to the PowerCal itself. Then you're going to need a few workouts that you download and import into the Power Agent software. This could be uh, fit type workouts, TCX, uh, different, uh, different aspects, but you got to be able to get some workouts in here and then use those as the basis for the calibration. Note that you're going to need both heart rate, as shown in red here, or, and actual power from our direct force power meter. And if you have those two things, you can go ahead and do the calibration process. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go under is select a workout. This is the first one I'm going to use. You can see it was a structured workout. I like to vary between some structured and some uh, just general endurance to be able to, to uh, do the calibration process. And essentially, before I get into this, I like to kind of iterate. In other words, I look at three different workouts or four different workouts and change the variables until I get something that is kind of in the middle between them all to come up with a reasonable overall power estimate. It'll make sense as I go into it. So the first thing we do is hit configure uh, power cow, and it says, do you want to do it based on this current activity? The answer is yes. By default, what, what software is trying to do is come up with a computed value of average power that is equal to the measured value as shown on the screen. These two do. Uh, as I look at this, uh, you can see that uh, the computed, the light blue, varies a bit from the yellow, which is the actual. The highs aren't as quite, quite as high and the lows aren't quite as low, but the average power lines up pretty well. If I was to do the same thing on the other workouts, uh, it doesn't uh, I'm going to get different values of these variables down here. And I have three variables to look at, A, B, and C. C being responsiveness is shown here. Um, let me chat a little bit about what each one of these things do. Responsiveness changes how quickly power changes in response to changes in heart rate. So if you have high changes in heart rate, you get high changes in power. So as I vary the responsiveness, you'll see a lot more um, noise in the data. In particular, early as I start to ramp up, you can see it looks like a huge power spike that you know, didn't really take place. I like to have a responsiveness. There, there is a power spike, but not as much of it showing. Um, I like to have the responsiveness at zero. And the reason is, is it, it, it does make it a little less maybe uh, following the data, the actual data. But what I found is, is when I had responsiveness on, and, you, and if you get a little bit of error in your heart rate data, in other words, a little spike here or there because you have some static electricity on your jerseys flapping, uh, you'll suddenly get a two or 3,000 watt spike. And then when you import it into, in, for data analysis, you've got these huge spikes that don't make any sense. So personally, I like to leave the responsiveness at zero. You can obviously change that if you prefer to have, have different values. Then there's A and B as our other two variables. A I like to think of as the range or amplitude. So as if I was to take this uh, default value that it calculated, overwrite it to four, and you can see that the highs and lows and the range looks a lot closer. So as I increase this value, I spread out the data, the highs, the highs and the lows become uh, more pronounced. B, shifts the entire curve up or down. So if I was to make a, a quick change and go to 200 here rather than 302, whatever it was, you can see that I get a big variance between my measured and actual and it shifts the curves. Um, if I want to put it back to about where it was, minus 302 or negative 302, you can see that it gets pretty close. So I'm just going to use these two numbers and I want to see how these two numbers look in the other two workouts to see if I'm in the right zip code. You can see in this one, it's uh, my estimated power is about three watts higher uh, than, than actual. You can see, and this is gonna be common trends, is that if your heart rate 
legs power a little bit when you're warming up, which is normal for most people. It's going to underestimate if your heart rate is a little bit high because you've worked out and you've got a little fatigue. It's going to overestimate your power at the end. Again, you're never going to be perfect, but can I get into the right zip code here? And, and I think three watts over uh, 200 is, is probably a good uh, measure or reasonable. I'm not going to hit OK. I'm going to hit Cancel. If I hit OK, it's going to try to save that to the power cal. I want to see what it's doing with other examples first. So again, same process, Tools. Configure power cow, use current activity, and I'm going to overwrite these to the same values that I used in the last one. So four and negative three zero two. And when I do that, um, you can see that in this case, the last one was about three watts high. This time they measured is about four watts low. But again, in, the, in, a, in a reasonable zip code, I think you have to look at it and say, if you're, if you're normally tra uh, training with a direct force power meter and you're using this on a mountain bike or when you're traveling or whatever else, you just want to be in the right zip code. So again, you can see reasonably close. I'm going to hit cancel out of that. And I'm going to look at my last case and see if I'm in the same zip code for that one as well. This particular one is another structured workout. Um, and this one is... Um, a template type workout, we'll go ahead and hit tools and configure power cow. Yes, I want to use the current activity. And again, I'm going to use the same values. So four and negative 302. Oops, computer's lagging a bit here. Negative 302. All right, so when I input those two values, kind of like the first case, it's about three watts high, but over 200 watts, it's not a huge deal. You find that even direct force power meters, if you had two, would vary more than that, probably. Over that, over that size. So in this particular case, rather than say cancel, I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And what that's gonna do is uh, bring up and ask you if you wanna save those. And the answer is yes. What it's gonna do is look for your device. You wanna make sure your device is on and, and awake. And generally to do that, you wanna make sure that, the, that you're wearing it <laughs> and that it's, uh, yeah, the, the sensors are, are wetted so that it's awake. So it's going to ask you about the device. You say, this is my device. Look, let's look at the calibration. This is what I have right now is what I is what I have. I want to rewrite it over what I've got over here. So I'm going to select uh, the right arrow. And uh, once I do, you can see it pops it over in place. And then I just hit OK. And it's going to go ahead and write that back to the power cow. Save your changes. And the next time you use your device, it'll be using those parameters for estimating your power from heart rate.